Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Are you disappointed in Lightroom's performance? In this video, I'm going to give you a couple tips and tricks that hopefully will have Lightroom running better on your computer. Adobe actually has a web page dedicated to optimizing Lightroom's performance. Everything I'm going to talk about in this video is on this web page, but this web page has a lot of stuff I'm not going to mention in this video. If you're interested, in the description below the video, I'll have a link to this web page. I encourage you to check it out. Now, we're going to talk about a number of different things in no particular order. I want to start out with previews. As you probably know, Lightroom uses a number of different types of previews throughout its different modules. For example, the film strip along the bottom will use a certain resolution preview, whereas the library module loop view will use a different resolution preview compared to the develop module will use a different preview. So you have all these different previews. And you have the option when you import images into it to specify what size previews you want Lightroom to create. If you create the previews during the import process, then Lightroom doesn't have to create them on the go. When Lightroom creates previews on the go, that's where it tends to bog down. So if you, for example, are creating just minimal size previews during the import process, when you're going, let's say, to the develop module, it has to create a higher resolution preview to display. That takes time, so it could slow down. Now I want to quote some things directly from here, and then I'm going to show you in Lightroom what they're talking about. We're going to go down to this preview part here about uh, render one-to-one -one previews intentionally. Um, during the import process, and I'll show you this in a moment, you have the option to create either minimal previews, embedded in sidecar previews, standard previews, or one-to-one -one previews. Now let's talk about the difference for a moment. Minimal previews, as it says here, these previews are the small low resolution JPEG previews embedded in the photos which the camera generates. They are the fastest type of preview to create. So that means when you import the images into Lightroom, it will go very quickly. The import process will go very fast because these previews actually are already created. They were created by your camera. The film strip and grid view of the library module uses minimal previews temporarily until Lightroom renders standard size previews for those thumbnails. So that's where it gets bogged down because it has to create these previews on the go. So you could um, improve Lightroom's performance if during the import process you choose something better than minimal. Next is embedded in sidecar. These previews are larger, also camera generated, and they take a little longer to create than the minimal previews. Next is standard. Lightroom creates standard previews. They use the Camera Raw engine for processing, so they sometimes appear different from minimal or embedded previews, especially if you have applied adjustments in the develop module. You can, it's, you can specify the size of the standard preview you need based on the display you use, and I'll talk about that and show you that in a moment. Standard previews are used in the film strip and grid view thumbnails, as well as in preview and content areas as a slideshow print and web modules. So you can see these different uh, previews get used, you know, different sizes get used in different locations of Lightroom. Finally, there's one-to-one -one previews. These previews are 100% view of the actual pixels and like standard previews, the Camera Raw engine processes them. When Lightroom generates one-to-one -one previews, it also generates minimal and standard previews, so all three are available to the program as needed. Because so much data is being processed, one-to-one -one previews can take a significant amount of time to create. Anytime you zoom to one-to-one -one or higher in the library module, Lightroom uses one-to-one -one previews. So, if you choose one-to-one, -one, your import process is going to take a long time because it has to ger generate not only the one-to-one -one previews, it generates the standard and the sidecar previews as well. So it's going to just take a longer to, time to import. It also is going to take up more disk space. But rendering inside a Lightroom will be much, much quicker because Lightroom won't have to generate those previews on the go. So what we're talking about here is if we go to the import dialog of Lightroom 
And over on the right hand panel under file handling, you can say build previews right here. I have it set to minimal, which as far as Lightroom performance is concerned, it's probably the worst choice. Now we have then the embedded in sidecar standard and one to one. So again, if you click the one to one, you'll have a high quality, high resolution preview to use in the develop module. You'll also have standard previews to use where needed, probably in the slideshow, web modules, and so on. And then you're going to have those embedded and sidecar previews as well, wherever it needs those. So you'll have all those previews available. Lightroom won't have to generate them on the go. So hopefully Lightroom will run much quicker. You most often will see this like in the develop module. Um, at the bottom of the image, do you ever see loading? Like as you click from image to image, let's see if I can get it to do it. Of course, it's going to make a layer out of me when it's when I'm trying to get it to do it. But trust me, um, at times, it, you'll see loading at the bottom as it's going from image to image, and I can't get it to do it. It's got, my computer has stage fright. It's not doing it. But anyway, that is the problem, is a lot of times it takes a long time for these images to render. Now, there's some other things you could do as well, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to catalog settings for that. Um, if you go up, uh, if you have a Mac, go to Lightroom Classic and go down to Catalog Settings. If you have a PC, this is under the Edit menu. And the second tab from the left, File Handling, or the middle tab, uh, we have some choices here. If you do create those one-to-one -one previews, I mentioned they take up a lot of disk space, and you're creating all those other previews as well. Well, you could have them expire after a specific length of time. Uh, I have it set to 30 days because most often when I import images, if I'm using one-to-one -one previews, um, it takes a long time to generate them during the import process, but they render super fast throughout Lightroom, but I'm only processing those images usually for a week, and then I'm done with them, really, and then I'm on to my next batch of imports. So uh, to preserve this space, you could set this to one day, one week, 30 days, or never. Uh, so you have your choice there. Now, it mentioned uh you might have remembered about the preview size it should be the same as the width resolution of your computer this is a 27 inch imac and it's 2560 by 1440 pixels so it's set to 2560 you don't want to go any smaller because if you go smaller then lightroom's still going to have to generate the preview to fit the screen uh, so make sure you're at the exact pixel width of your monitor also the preview quality the higher preview will just take a little longer to create and actually to render just to display it just takes a little longer so uh, adobe recommends you use medium or low i have it set to medium um, now if you really want to see a super high resolution you have like a very expensive monitor that you know is uh you know very um precise colors high resolution whatever and you really want to see that a high quality preview then definitely set it to high and um, then you'll be able to uh, better uh, see the representation that you're doing as you're processing but I have it set to medium and that works out pretty well so those are previews what you could do with all these previews to help Lightroom run a little quicker now there's some other things we could do we're gonna go to, to the preferences tab again under a Mac it's under the Lightroom classic menu if you have a PC, it's under the edit menu. And we're going to go to preferences and we're going to go to the performance tab. We're going to jump down here to the camera raw cache settings. Um, when Lightroom creates previews on the go, it actually puts them in the cache folder. Now, if you're, uh, let's say I clicked on this image here, right? This image that's displayed now. And I had it set to minimal previews on import. You saw that, right? So Lightroom had to generate all the previews for this display and everything. It puts them in that cache folder. It doesn't delete them. It just will leave it there until the folder gets full. Then it starts deleting the old stuff. But it leaves it there. It's not going to delete it. So what happens is um, six months later, when I click on this image again, it's going to look in that folder and see if it has previews available. And if they are, good. It doesn't have to generate them, so it'll go a little faster. When you first get Lightroom, I believe this maximum size is set to 5 gigabytes. Um, 
It used to be one gigabyte, but I think for the Lightroom Classic latest version, they now changed that to five. Either way, that's too small uh, because, as I mentioned, it's going as it gets full, then it starts overwriting old, uh, you know, cache um, items that are there. So what you want to do is make this as large as you can. I have it set to 50 gigabytes. So increase your cache file size, and that hopefully will help Lightroom run a lot faster. Now the next thing is the graphic processor up here. Um, there's always been a kind of a debate, and I often get the question, if you have X number of dollars to spend on a computer, should you get more RAM or a better CPU or a better GPU? Well, this kind of the standard answer is get the as much as you can, the best CPU you could afford, the best GPU you could afford, and the best RAM you could afford. But that really isn't a good answer because sometimes you just only have that extra $200 and it could go through the GPU, it could go to the CPU, or it could go to the RAM. Well, this answer for Lightroom, Lightroom is a heavy CPU and GPU intensive application. So try to put that money more towards the GPU first, the CPU second, and then the RAM third, which is not the answer I would have gave maybe 10 years ago. Because um, in the past, you always wanted to increase your RAM. Make, get as much RAM as, you, as possible and you'll see your applications run a lot quicker. And that's still true for a lot of different applications. But Lightroom is more CPU and GPU oriented. So get the fastest CPU available and the best GPU you could afford. Uh, throw your money into those and you should see Lightroom perform a lot better. Now, if possible, get the most RAM you can as well, and you'll really see a performance boost. Now, as far as using the built-in GPU that's in the CPU or using your external GPU, uh, try to use the external one. It's usually better. Uh, so you have a drop down here. It's set to auto, customer off. If you set to auto, then it's just going to switch to this GPU when it needs it. So the external GPU, which is this is a relatively old iMac, so it has an older GPU. So it's gonna to switch to it when it needs it. If you set it to custom, then it's going to use the GPU for display as you could see here. I could also click use GPU image for processing. I don't have that clicked normally because I found Lightroom to lock up when I have that clicked. It's unique to this GPU and my computer and CPU. So it's not necessarily something you need to worry about. My advice to you is use auto, and if it, everything's working well, don't worry about it. If it's not quite working well, try custom, then try it with this configuration. Use GPU for image processing and see how it runs. If it's still like locking up or acting odd, unclick that checkbox, let that checkbox stay clicked, then try it. Now I found that runs best for my system. So try it and see which you know works best for you. Now, if your GPU isn't compatible with Lightroom for whatever reason, all this will be grayed out. So you won't really have any choice there at all. So, um, I don't know, like I said, you're gonna have to experiment there and see what works best for you. I found this works best for me. Um, also, I should mention, if you're doing anything with video in Lightroom, you have a separate video cache as well, and you could limit the size. You don't want the video cache. It could get really big, and it will start in uh, taking up your, your main cache, so you could limit that. Um, and that way, you're, you'll have more cache for photos, is I guess what I'm trying uh, to say. Now, uh, next, I want to talk about optimizing the catalog. Uh, you can see there's a choice here, Optimize Catalog. Um, when we're continually in Lightroom and we're uh, developing images and we're deleting images, we're creating folders, we're moving images from folder to folder, we're creating catalogs, all this gets written to the catalog and sometimes the catalog gets a little bit disorganized and it takes longer for Lightroom to read things from the catalog because it has to jump all around. So if that is the case, uh, with your Lightroom, what you could do is you could go to preference here and you could optimize the catalog. And when you click that, it says, I last optimized my catalog yesterday. 
And if it's running slowly and you haven't optimized recently, optimizing it again may improve performance. So click on optimize right there. You also could get to this. You don't have to uh, go that uh, preferences dialog to do that. You could do it from the file menu, optimize catalog right there, and you could do it from there as well. Now, the other thing I want to talk about, we're going to go back to catalog settings for this, and we're going to go to the metadata tab. Um, you'll see right here I have automatically write changes to, into XMP, and I have that checked. That takes up more time. Typically, with Lightroom right out of the box, that won't be checked. So when you edit images in Lightroom, your edits, because Lightroom is non-destructive, it's not writing anything directly to the file, it's writing your edits to the catalog. If you check this box, it will write to the catalog, but it also writes them to a sidecar XMP file, which is in the same folder as the image. That takes up more time, so it's writing your edits twice. It particularly will take up more time if you're using a lot of brush strokes and a lot of spot removal, because that takes up a lot of, of energy, uh, CPU strength, CPU cycles to, to render those. So it takes a lot of time to write those all out as well into the catalog and the XMP file. So you may want this unchecked. And it, by default, it is unchecked. Now I keep it checked. The reason why I keep it checked is I have all my images on a different hard drive from my catalog file. So my catalog file is on the main hard drive in the computer. All my images are on an external hard drive. All the edits get written not only to the catalog, but to that external hard drive with the images. If my computer ever crashes and I lose my catalog files, I would lose my edits too. But because I have the edits with the images on that external hard drive, when I get a new computer or fix my old computer, all I need to do is open up Lightroom and re-import all those images on that external hard drive and all the edits will get imported with them. If I didn't have those external XMP sidecar files there, then I'd lose all my edits. So that's why I keep that checked. It will affect performance though. All right, the other thing you could do uh, has to do with smart previews. And for that, we're again going to go to the preferences tab. And you could see um, right here, there's a checkbox under the performance tab Use Smart Previews instead of Originals for Image Editing. It will, you'll see right here, this will allow increased performance, but may display decreased quality while editing. Final output will remain full size quality. So when you export the image, you're gonna get full size and quality, but while you're editing the image, it may not be as high quality as it could be, but it will increase performance. So you could have that checked as well, and that maybe will help you um, get images or have Lightroom perform better as you're editing the images. So those are some tips. Again, it's not everything that is on that web page I mentioned. And again, in the description below this video, I'll have a link uh, to this web page. Also, I should add, if I go back to preferences here, uh, right here, more performance tips. You see, that's a little link under the performance tab. If you click on that, it will bring you right to this web page. So you could check that out as well. So that's it. I hope these tips help you have Lightroom run better on your machine. If you have a tip of your own that you did that makes Lightroom run better for you, leave a comment below and let us know what it is. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.